Things getting heated on Capitol Hill moments ago as DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas answered tough questions before the Senate Homeland Security Committee. Just watch as Senator Josh Hawley questioned him about a series of posts made by a DHS agent which allegedly celebrated, you just heard the atrocities, celebrated the October 7th terrorist attack on Israel. Number I'm sorry, two. what have you, this person works for the Department of Homeland Security. Have you fired her? That was one of four answers. Have you fired her? One. Have you fired her? Don't come to this hearing room when Israel has been invaded and Jewish students are barricaded in libraries in this country and cannot be escorted out because they are threatened for their lives, you have employees who are celebrating genocide and you are saying it's despicable for me to ask the question? Has she been fired? So uh, that individual has been placed on administrative leave. So she's not one. been fired, but she's still on your payroll as that, we sit here today. That is not what I'm saying. She's still on your payroll as we sit here today. Mm. I mean, Harris, it should be pretty simple. You support terrorists. You don't have a government job. It's not simple for them, though, because they don't feel that way. <laughs> so they just they're showing us who they are and, and they they should be embarrassed and they should be humiliated having to show it. But they aren't changing their actions. They're just trying to lie on camera by obfuscation. Uh, you know, I wanted to go back to the, the yellow stars for just a second. The, the Jewish badge that they made six-year-olds and up wear so that they could isolate and identify Jews during the Holocaust. And, and previous to that, it was the ramp up that really I want to concentrate on now. Is that what we're seeing in this country? Mm. And I think it's now time we start to ask that question seriously. Where are the brave administrators and faculty members in this country? Who will stand up at the most expensive and elite universities and say, no, we said it would never happen again? I mean, we are now living in a country with an enormous number of heart donors. They have nothing beating in their chests. It's all pure evil and hate. And they tolerate things that we cannot have pull us into the darkness. So how do you stop it? And, you know, look, the senator from Missouri, Josh Hawley, was, was trying to say, can you just deny and fire somebody who's propelling the, the hate brigade here? And they can't even do that because they don't want to. That's not who they are. Yeah. They're not on our side. I'm glad we know. Identify yourselves. You don't have to wear a yellow star. Just keep doing what you're doing and telling who you are and we'll know. First of all, I actually, I actually uh, agree with the ambassador wearing yellow star. I don't, have a, I don't agree with Yad Vashem on this because what he's saying is before the Holocaust, there was a buildup. And in yeah. the Warsaw Ghetto, which is what Harris is referring to, people were, children were compelled to wear the yellow star. He's saying, I'm wearing the yellow star. I'm proud that I'm a Jew. But you know, I'm going to tell you something shocking. I talked to my 100-year-old father today who was here during World War II in the United States serving in the military. I said, was there this kind of anti-Semitism in the United States during World War II? He said, no, it's worse now. These groups overtly anti-Semitic after a pogrom occur, a pogrom type activity occurs mm -hmm. with Hamas and this is happening as a response to that. He said, in World War II, we didn't know there was a Holocaust going on here in the, in the United States. They weren't right. aware of the extent of it. My father went to Cooper Union. It was free in those days, a very proud institution. He was shocked to learn that people, the Jewish people had a barricade behind doors in a library because they were being physically threatened. This is not what the United States should be. It is not what no. we, are, we were formed as, and we have to go back to loving and caring for each other, much more of a religious yeah. idea, like you were saying, Carrie. Yeah, Carly, and, and I do want to play another thought for you um, from Israel's ambassador to the UN, but just noting, mm -hmm. important for our viewers to know, uh, the condemnations that the UN has put forward, 15 condemnations of Israel, this was pre-attack since the beginning of the year, six condemnations of Russia, one of Iran, Syria, and North Korea, and zero of Venezuela. So that's where the UN stands. Let's watch the Israeli ambassador. In the face of the UN's silence, our enemies have become emboldened. They have seen the UN General Assembly applauding efforts to prevent the Jews from defending ourselves. They heard the Secretary General portray understanding for the Nazi slaughter. slaughter. And this is precisely why we have seen the most staggering rise in Jew hatred since the Nuremberg Laws and their aftermath. 
The anti-Semites have been empowered. They now know that slaughtering Jews in their beds is met with silence. Yeah. And on the U.N. front, uh, Jennifer Griffin posted uh, something on social media yesterday. Her ex-post was, pop quiz, who takes the chair of the U.N. Human Rights Council on November 2nd and 3rd? Answer, the ambassador of the Islamic Republic mm -hmm. of Iran. So that is wow. all you need to know about the United Nations. Yep. Uh, there are there have been so many times as that I've been watching watching TV as a viewer and just thought, I wish I didn't hear that. I didn't even know that level of brutality was possible. And now it's going to stay with all of us for the rest of our lives. But this isn't just a story. I mean, this happened to people. And it's almost hard to rational how God would put people on this earth only for them to be taken in such a horrible way. And I think that there are a lot of people people struggling out there with that. If, if you're one of them, I'm right there with you. I'm not saying that my faith has been shaken. I just can't imagine this level of brutality. And now that there are calls for a ceasefire, when <laughs> it, it, the neighbor of Israel, is their sole purpose is destroying them in such a brutal way, it does not make sense. Good versus evil, Emily. Yeah, and I just want to dig a little deeper into the UN, because as we consistently repeat how the greatest anti-Semitic organization essentially outside of the terror organizations is the UN, I want people to understand and know exactly why and how. So, for example, last year, the UN condemned Israel more times than they condemned every other country combined. And when you spoke about the, the ones that they condemned last year, no condemnations whatsoever toward Turkey, China, Qatar, Venezuela, and more. And not only was that just last year alone, but since 2015, the GA has adopted 140 resolutions condemning and criticizing Israel. Guess how many for the world combined? 68. Hmm. A mere 68. And I have to point out this, the final point, because we're getting low on time, that just in the beginning of this year, before these atrocities began, before Hamas invaded Israel and butchered their people with the goal of extermination, the UN referred to the ICJ, the International Criminal Court of, of Justice, they referred Israel for what they called as the prolonged occupation, settlement, and annexation of Palestinian territory. To me, Israel is wasting that effort against before the UN with these yellow stars of David they should be so proud to wear that we all solidarity wear with them because that body, more than anyone else, is the deaf ears. Yep, almost as if the United Nations exists to target one nation, Israel. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.